Welcome to the next video in the Metal Machining series. Here we're going to be looking at geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, commonly known as GD&T. So geometric dimensions and tolerances is a system for defining and communicating engineering tolerances. It uses symbols on engineering drawings and computer-generated 3D models that explicitly describe nominal geometry and its allowable variation. It tells the manufacturing staff and machines what degree of accuracy and precision is needed on each controlled feature of the part. So what is gd &T? There are several standards available worldwide that describe the symbols and define the rules used in gd &T. We are going to focus on the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, or the ASME standard Y14.5. Proper application of gd &T will ensure that the part defined on the drawing has the desired form, fit within limits, and function with the largest possible tolerances. gd &T can add quality and reduce cost at the same time through producibility. You can see an example of a 2D drawing here with standard dimensions as well as gd &T dimensions. So there are a number of fundamental rules that need to be applied with gd &T. All dimensions must have a tolerance. Dimensions define the nominal geometry and allowable variation. Engineering drawings define the requirements of finished complete parts. Dimensions should be applied to features and arranged in such a way as to represent the function of the features. Descriptions of manufacturing methods should be avoided. Dimensions and tolerances apply to the length, width and depth of a feature including form variation. Dimensions and tolerances only apply at the level of the drawing where they are specified. Right, so let's have a look at some of the details on how to get a gd &T onto a drawing. Now we need a feature control frame. In gd &T, a feature control frame is required to describe the conditions and tolerances of a geometric control on a parts feature. The feature control frame consists of four pieces of information. One, gd &T symbol or control symbol. Two, tolerance zone type and dimensions. 3. Tolerant Zone Modifiers, Features of Size and Projections and 4. The Datum References, if required by gd &T Symbol. This information provides everything you need to determine what geometrical tolerance needs to be on a part and how to measure or determine if the part is in specification. So let's have a look at the feature control frame in more detail. Starting from the left here, we have the leader arrow. Then we have the geometric characteristic tolerance. Next is diameter symbol. If the product is a cylindrical product, we add the cylindrical tolerance zone. Then we have the stated tolerance then the modifier for stator tolerance then we have the datums first we have a primary then secondary and tertiary this makes up the full feature control frame how to read the feature control frame so let's have a look at this one we had previously and i've broken this down such that we can read it so the position of the feature axis must be within a 0.014 tolerance zone at maximum material condition relative to datums A, B and C.
Here's an example of the feature control frame as we had it in the previous slide. In this example of a part drawing, the GDNT calls out the four holes in each corner of the part, each with a diameter of 4.763. The position of the feature axis must be within 0.014 tolerance zone at maximum material condition relative to datums feature A, B, and C. We can see that laid out here. Here's a table of the GD&T symbols. I should just highlight some of these, but you can pause this and study it at your own leisure. On the left-hand side, we have the symbol. Then we have the control type itself, the name of the symbol, and a summary description. So let's have a look at the top one. So the symbol is a straight line. This control type is form, and the form name is straightness. Now the summary description on this controls the straightness of a feature in relation to its own perfect form. Let's have a look at the modifiers or the GD&T modifiers. M, maximum material condition. L, least material condition. P, is projected tolerance zone. F, is free state variation. T, is tangent plane. ST, is statistical tolerance geometric. And the arrows is between So why use GD&T? There are five major advantages of using GD&T. One, saving money. GD&T enhances design accuracy, allowing for appropriate tolerances that maximize production. Two, ensuring dimensional and tolerance requirements. By explicitly stating all design requirements, a thorough GD&T process guarantees accurate fulfillment of all dimensional and tolerance specifications. Three, assisting digital design methods. Clear, concise GD&T data is readily adaptable to digital design programs, including universally used 2D and 3D CAD files. Four, offering uniformity and convenience. As a single consistent language, GD&T reduces guesswork and interpretation while ensuring consistent geometries across design and manufacturing. Five, providing accurate communication. Today's intricate designs demand the most accurate and reliable communication. GDNT enables designers, manufacturers, and inspectors to communicate clearly with one another, saving time and making the process more efficient. In the next video, we're going to be looking at machined surfaces. Surface finish, also known as surface texture or surface topography, is the nature of a surface as defined by the three characteristics of lay, surface roughness and waviness and comprises the small local deviations of a surface from the perfectly flat ideal. Don't forget to check out our other videos in this series and you can contact us if you need any help with your projects in China. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and for more information on products that we deal with, visit our solutions page at softeast.com. Thanks for listening. My name is Paul Adams from Softeast, and I shall see you in the next video.